public image of stands, valuation of who we are, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to open up the floor for comments by visitors. Any comments by visitors this evening, please approach the podium. Say your name and address. We'd be happy to hear you. Okay. Seeing none, agenda item number two, the consent calendar. Uh, what's the wish of the board to adopt the consent calendar as presented? I make a motion to adopt the consent calendar as presented. Okay. I second. Okay. Any discussion on any of the items in the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, consent calendar is adopted. Um, agenda item number three, our reports. We'll start with our superintendent report. Thank you. I apologize. I'm going to stop my report uh, sharing information about student enrollment for September 2024. Uh, it's in the board packet. I know you've had a chance to look at it, but by way of public announcement, um, currently we have uh, total enrollment in summers of 1,332 students. I believe it's up. I need to get with, look at the October 1 count, and I'll come back next time in October talk to you about uh, what the official count is that we submit to the state. But it's currently at 1,332. Um, we have a total enrollment at Idlehurst of 328. We have 47 students in preschool, 98 in kindergarten, 85 in grade 1, 98 in grade 2. At Maplewood School, the total enrollment is 284. Grade 3, we have 93 students. Grade 4, 89. Grade 5, 102. Summers with Middle School, total enrollment of 3,011. I'm sorry, 311, not 3,000, 311. <laughs> Let me make a correction there, because we'd be building a new school, uh, which we don't want to do right now. So, uh, Summers Middle School, again, the total enrollment is 311, uh, 92 in grade 6, uh, 110 in grade 7, and 109 in grade 8. <clears throat> and last but not the least is Summers with High School, enrollment of 409, uh, grade 9 is a large class of 118, uh, grade 10, 104, grade 11, 89, and grade 12, 98. So it's nice to see the freshmen coming in uh, 20 students above the seniors that will be leaving. So that's a, that's a healthy sign. So I don't know if you have any questions, but I wanted to give you that latest and greatest information. Again, we do the, um, the official count as of 10-1, October 1st. Uh, we'll, we'll submit the official count. Then at that time, I'll be able to contrast last year with this year, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Moving on to the update on title grants. I've asked uh, Ms. Susan uh, Blair to come up tonight, and she's our Title I Curriculum Director. I wanted to give her some time. I wanted to yield the floor to her uh, to allow her to give you an update on things that are happening uh, throughout the district. and. Uh, Susan, welcome. Good to see you. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. So I want to tell you about the hard work of the, the administrative staff and um, how diligently we've worked to um, expend the title funds in a, in a meaningful manner. So I've provided you with a breakdown um, of our allocations. Um, the top section of it is this year. So that's school year 24. You can see the end dates vary, and that's simply because that's what the grants allow. Can you all hear me OK? OK. So usually your Title I, well, your Title I grant is a one-year grant. Um, it starts about July 1st, depending on the, when they release their numbers, and it ends the following September. So you'll see where some grants is, are closing out this September because they're either a Title I grant or they're a two-year grant that is presently ending. Again, we've worked really hard to think about what do the children need. So if you know anything about Title I, that's to support our kids who um, qualify under financial reasons. 
that isn't necessarily how we allocate our resources to our kids because we're not allowed to know what free and reduced children what children receive free and reduced so we do it based on the needs the academic needs of the kids um, but also as a principal and a teacher I know that we also look at the social emotional behavioral because it all intertwines and sometimes interferes so this year we worked on just looking at what does each school need to provide the services to the children that really need the extra help um, and what we did was we bought staff so each one of the schools actually has at least one title one teacher um, a cup one school does have two title one teachers and then the other schools have a title one teacher and two tutors um, and that's pretty consistent throughout um, summers where school district the interesting this thing this year was um, our high school qualified um, so if you do your homework you'll find that not a lot of districts service their high school students under title one um, that's at the discretion of the superintendent to tell you the truth if they qualify by the numbers for free and reduced which our um, high school students do um, it is at the discretion of the superintendent whether or not we provide services um, after a uh, not lengthy but not short discussion um, we felt it was important to start providing services to our freshman class so trying to close that gap so we've all heard about the impact of COVID um, and it's not only on our littles it's on our high school kids too so after having a conversation with Chris and Mike one of the things they really hoped for was to have some type of freshman um, academic intervention and that's what we're starting this year so we've been able to hire a staff member for the freshman class at the high school level level along with that goes you know what are you using for interventions and what are you using for programs and things like that and I'll I'll capture that in a minute um, under title four especially for the high school but um, we've almost spent every penny <laughs> there are still some things that we we need to cover under title one you can see there's a little bit of money um, one of those things under substantially approved what that means we can start spending the money but we haven't received the final approval so it's sitting at the DOE I'm waiting for it to come back because there's a couple of activities like for the middle school um, there's an assembly that the middle school wants to have with some group work afterwards and so we want to have that added to it I can tell you as soon as I get it back probably most of that money will be expended um, title two is um, for professional development I really have to commend this district on the professional development that they provide for their teachers I have never seen anything like it and as most of you have heard I have been in quite a few cities or towns um, across the state of New Hampshire they've done an excellent job and this usually falls on the principal or the assistant principal or a combination of both to decide you know what what are we going to do and how are we going to do it and where they are now is they're bridging from school to school so the example I can give you is um, both Idlehurst and Maplewood are now working on doing some in-depth work having a consultant come in and look at how they teach and what they teach and the strategy you have to be pretty brave to do that your teachers have to be pretty brave to put themselves out there and have a consultant come in and that's what um, well Maplewoods is starting in a couple of weeks and then uh, after that um, Idlehurst will be doing that so we'll be able to have conversations about what are we doing in our classrooms that's working now this is with mathematics and what are we doing in our classrooms that we need to look at again and say mm, how do we need to change this or what do we need to add to it to help it become more effective so there's lots of things going on with title two um, there's some work with um, assessments 
So Idlehurst has, is in the process of adopting a new assessment tool to hopefully take less time away from the classroom. So if you have ever heard anything about running records, they can take forever. Um, and if you've got a whole class, doesn't matter what the number is of the whole class, it still takes a lot of time because it's about 20 minutes per child. Um, and that's an average. So we're looking at, um, we've actually been trained at Idlehurst in M class which if any of you are in education or know anything about education or even had a child that's been assessed in early childhood, you might remember Dibbles. Um, this is actually called Dibbles 8. And they've taken all the recommendations of the experts who have said, mm, we need to look at Dibbles again. And they've revamped it. And it's, it's a viable tool. And it, and it helps teachers identify the learning gaps for children um, in reading. It uses um, Scarborough Rope, which is your components of reading and how they intertwine and how you, they say now that you should teach them simultaneously. ESOL, I didn't put a lot in there because until two weeks ago, I really didn't have a chance to meet with our ESOL teachers and there's not a lot in the previous grants to give me very much information. but. In a short time, we've done a lot of work, and that's why I gave you this. Um, there are only three ESOL teachers. Um, one is Katie. She works with the middle school and the high school. Emma works at Maplewood, and um, Jolene works at um, Idlehurst. We've met for a couple of Fridays. We said, OK, what do we want to do, and how do we want to do this? do it. And the first thing I said to them was, how are we introducing ourselves to the families? Because being a family that doesn't speak English, it's pretty difficult. So how do we wrap ourselves around our families so that we can help them with the resources the, the city offers? So we've decided to have an ESOL family event. Um, we're designing business cards for all of us so that we can hand something tangible to the family so they know who we are, but they also know how to get in touch with us. We're also um, having t-shirts made. A matter of fact, we're having um, the Career Technical Center um, make our t-shirts. They've helped design them, and we're going to give them away as raffles for our families who attend. We're not going to going to do just one. We're going to do one every trimester. You know, so there's there's a mindset with some districts that you check the box. Oh, we have to do this. So check. We've done it once. Um, we believe this is is an important resource for these families. And Summersworth has a lot of ESOL families. As a matter of fact, probably dropped it or didn't bring it up. But I believe Emma told me this morning. Uh, we have 97 ESOL children that are on their rosters. 66 of them are receiving services, and the rest of them are on a monitor status. So in other words, um, we assess our ESOL kids, and as we see that they're becoming more proficient and are able to manage things on their own, they become monitor. But we still check back in. And I believe it's for a three-year period we check those children. Um, so you can see that Summersworth has a growing population of students who um, have English as a second language. And we are working really hard to provide um, supportive services for them, but it's also for their family. This year, what you'll notice is that ESOL, or Title III, was broken into two components. So the first component is the ESOL. So how are we providing supports? How are we providing um, language instruction to them? And there's one more that I'm not going to remember, but you get the gist. Um, the immigrant children and youth, I really haven't even had a chance to look at. Um, so that will be my next conversation with my ESOL um, staff to help me problem solve that, and we'll write a grant for that. We're working on doing things 
like I've already said, but we're also looking at like field trips for these students so they have uh, those hands-on experiences, right? Um, going up to the Hamilton House in Maine and having a gui guided tour and then talking about what did you hear, what did you see, and making those connections. So we're, we're trying to do some of those things. The last thing is Title IV. And if I'm being really honest with you, it's a nightmare. Um, the principals behind me know that I've probably written this thing four times, and each time it, it's been kicked back to me. And then they did a visual graphic, and I went, oh, now it makes sense. So essentially, you have to have um, a category of well-rounded, you have to have a category of safe schools, and then you have this other category that also has to have technology in it, but not computers. Right, guys? Not computers, because we really want, as we spoke about at the last meeting that I was here, you know, that one-to-one, -one, we're really chomping at getting one-to-one, -one, especially for our high schoolers. So this is more about um, technology software like Cahoots, um, which is something that we are working on purchasing. So once I figured out the nuances of Title IV, we came up with some pretty cool things. One is, what's the path one, new path? My path, thank you. I left my notes in my office. I grabbed everything but my notes. My path, which will be used um, with the freshman um, academic intervention class. Um, it also helps track where the holes are. So a lot of your technology tools now in education help teachers find the holes. Um, another component of that is um, live free recovery, which our schools have had before um, under a grant. And when the grant goes away, you wonder where you're going to get the money. Well, this is where I'm trying to do that. And that falls under um, safe and healthy schools, right? Um, and there's a few more in there, but I really remember the high school because we're really trying to pick up those pieces and parts that um, the high school really needs, especially that freshman intervention. Um, because once they stop trying and they don't get the credits or they don't earn the credits, then you have a vicious cycle of failure. So we're Chris and Michael and the rest of the team are really trying to get in front of that so that we don't have a vicious cycle of failure and we don't have children dropping out or not being engaged. Those are the things we're looking at all the time in education. The things below that, SY23 and SY22, those are the things that I'm monitoring and I will tell you that I tried really hard to catch the zeros. Um, there just wasn't enough time in the day. And the zeros are there because it wasn't budgeted um, before I walked in the door. Um, and I tried to figure out how to expend the funds before the window closed. Um, you can see that there is one there, the ARP homeless, that I still have a chance to close, but I wanted to get my um, typical titles finished before um, I went back to the previous years to do that. So you can see we're doing a really good job. Um, Summersworth has a good chunk of money. It's just about how do we expend it and expend it in a prudent way to support our kids and their learning. I will tell you, which I didn't mention, um, Title I does have reallocation. So somewhere around the end of November, the beginning of December, we will get a reallocation um, amount, which is usually about 15%. Um, if, it's, if we know that money's been turned back, that's a higher amount than that. If it's um, significant enough and it hasn't been done in the past three years, we can write to ask that we get our full um, reallocation back. Um, but I don't know where we stand with that, and Katie's been so busy, I haven't even bothered her with that type of um, question or information. So thank you. Um, probably next time I see you, I'll come up and talk about curriculum, because we have some pretty cool things happening there, too. That flyer I gave you, or brochure, that's made by the state. We are going to be creating one, so the ESO, 
ESOL teachers and I will be creating a brochure for Summersworth with the resources and um, information to support ESOL kids and families. All right, thank you so much. Very good question. All right, yeah, board <laughs> member Tierney, any follow up questions? Thanks. All right, um, thank you. This is you're this welcome. Is, this, is, this is exciting stuff. I was just really curious with our ESL population. I know we have a large Indonesian community in Summersworth. What other communities do we have represented by those? Uh, the 96, what did you say, 97? Yeah, I can't answer that yeah, question because okay. <laughs> I didn't ask for those particulars. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I know that when I started talking with the ladies, uh, we had about 66 kids on our list. Um, and so that was two weeks ago, so you can see how things are growing. We plan on having this event is just a general event, but I know in the past they've liked to have events that highlight different cultures different culture. and different families. So we will be doing that and hopefully I'll learn more. I was just really interested yeah. to know that, but yeah. We can get, yeah. if you want to get yeah. that data, I we can. can yeah, I can certainly. The ladies right. can thank tell you. me for sure. Yeah, oh, sure. No, thank you. That'd be great. Um, thank you for doing all this work. That's, that's lots, lots of work. Um, a couple quick questions. That sure. title, um, is it 4A on the bottom that has yep. 61,000? Is that wrapped into the one at the top? So some of the monies okay. I... So it's called a transfer or a flex. So to be able to do what we wanted to do for supports for Title I, I transferred or flexed some of the money. Um, so Title IV was flexed for this year, but we still have last year's Title IV money. Um, so I'm focusing on expending that. But the flex did happen so that I can, so that we could provide the supports we needed for our kids. Okay, great. One more thing. Sure. Um, I heard that you said you want to write business cards for the families. I think that's amazing. Um, do you, we know the languages that we're going to give out to the families? Can they read English? Is that? Well, that's, that's one of the challenges, right? And in not knowing all of the languages. Um, and I know one of our teachers is fluent in Spanish, but I'm not sure of the fluency of the rest of our families. But that's the purpose behind the one on the 27th is to try and figure out who needs what and to find the resources to be able to, ha if we need a translator, to right. get a translator for those families that just have no foundation in English. We will do those things. So we're, we're building our resource list and we're also trying to figure out what they need and how we can support them. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I will plug the uh, Interact Club, I believe, at the high school, which are like their intercultural club, I believe, not to throw them in. Yeah, yeah, inter multicultural club that, you know, maybe needs hours and could help out a little bit and connect with them. Sounds uh, good. I just had one question on the Title 4B 21st. I don't see it in, is that was our previous, that was our previous um, one for SYC in twenty. Correct. Too. Right. Right. And that, right. yeah. Right. No longer, so yeah. they close or no. they end certain grants. And then, okay. like you can see, that this year we have Title III ESOL and Title III Immigrant Children and Youth. There's new ones. Um, so, the, yep. and I know in another couple of weeks there's going to be a competitive sa safety grant that is going to come out. So they're always moving them in different mm -hmm. ways. Okay. We're fortunate, too, just so that you know, they're always. Um, telling us that Title I, we're going to have a reduction in funding, and Summersworth really hasn't had a reduction in funding, so that's a plus, too, because it really helps with um, providing those Tier 2 supports for our children who are really struggling. Great. All right, Board Member Marsh. I just want to thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for your commitment. Thank you. And I appreciate the, uh, the family night. I appreciate reaching out to communities within, within our community. Um, it's, it's good to be available, but it's better to, be, to reach out Absolutely. to families and to those that we're um, um, helping. So thank you. Our t-shirt says creating community. So, you know, taking all of these families and creating a community.
Thank you. I appreciate your appreciation. All right. Thank, thank you. Susan. Thank you, Susan. Wonderful. Uh, before I jump into my next item, I wanted to thank the administrators who are here tonight. Um, they, I'm going to talk a little bit about transportation, and they uh, met with me uh, last week. And I just want to say thank you for being here tonight. And I know they're going to stick around because they have some interest in uh, the discussion around adequacy. Um, so uh, use of additional adequacy money. So thank you for being here. So I want to talk about transportation. I want to take this one head on because um, uh, we had a couple of uh, parents contact us with some concerns about uh, transportation. And generally at the beginning of every school year, and I've been in a number of different school districts, it takes a couple of weeks to really work out the glitches when it comes to transportation. If you think about it, kids are coming back from summer, and particularly younger students, um, um, they, they um, need to relearn what the bus is all about and behaviors on the bus. Um, and so um, we've had a few glitches and, and the complaints have been um, more a length of time on the bus and um, also um, there was some concern perhaps about overcrowding uh, on uh, buses. And I think that perception was mainly due to the fact that the district used to have six buses and was, it was um, moved to five. And so I just wanted to uh, share with you some feedback that I got from the principals and other administrators. So I'm, um, on Friday, September 8th, I met with all the principals, uh, first, uh, first student representatives, and uh, Katie was there as well, and Susan, who was here um, uh, speaking earlier, met with me to talk about what's going on with transportation to make sure uh, we're addressing uh, the needs. So um, after the meeting, uh, I sent a letter to parents uh, letting them know about uh, some of our bus, bus glitches. glitches. I think many of you received the letter, but I'm just going to share with you what I wrote. Uh, Dear Summers with Families, with the first week of school ending, we'd like to thank you for your continued support. We hope your students have enjoyed their first week despite the heat. Yes, it was very hot uh, last week, uh, and it's still muggy as we move on. Uh, there is always so much to learn and do during this very important week. We understand that, that there have been some glitches with the bus schedules. Sometimes what looks good on paper does not work when put into practice. Uh, we have met as an administrative team with the bus company to develop a plan that will be more efficient and timelier. We hope that uh, you see a difference early next week. We will notify all families regarding bus schedule time changes in the near future. We appreciate your patience and look forward to a wonderful school year full of new adventures in learning. So after I met with the uh, administrative team, uh, I sent that letter out to parents on, on Friday. I felt it was important to get something out and um, let folks know. So at the meeting on the 8th with all the administrators, the following was learned. We learned the following. There was some construction that was going on uh, in the area that, that delayed some of the bus runs. Um, we also learned that uh, some of the younger children are getting to know the bus routine as well as parents getting used to dropping off and picking up their children uh, with their vehicles. And that causes some delays initially during, during the year in terms of timing. And um, the other thing is there were some, also some student behaviors that needed to be addressed and that can slow a bus down at times. Uh, kids who um, need to be redirected, particularly younger students and even some middle school students um, uh, need to be redirected and to um, you know, show appropriate etiquette on the bus. Um, um, so uh, that caused some timing delays. Um, the published bus routes times are inaccurate. And uh, so I guess they've been the same times for the last six years. And I assumed, and you know what that means, I made an assumption uh, that uh, that was under control. And we learned on Friday that that needs to be tweaked. So we asked the uh, bus company to go back and rework the routes and also the times so that parents aren't expecting students to be dropped off at 4 when they should be dropped off perhaps at 4.05. Or, so there were some issues around that. Uh, so the published bus routes times are inaccurate and that needs to be fixed. Um, and uh, so we had a couple of complaints that students were not being picked up or dropped off according to times published by the bus company. Um, there is no overcrowding on the buses. Uh, here's what we know about student ridership, and I presented a handout for you. If there's folks in the public that want to see this information, I can certainly share this with you. Uh, I know there's a couple of folks out there that might want this information, so I'll just pass that out. And I know the board has copies of this. So when you look at the sheet that I prepared for you, I broke it out on morning runs 
and afternoon runs. And in Summersworth, you have three tiers. You have tier one, uh, which is um, the Summersworth Middle School and the Summersworth High School. That's the first tier that goes out to deliver students to school or pick students up from school. Uh, if you look at the chart that I created, uh, S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5 are school buses. They're called S1, S2, S5, S3, yeah, and right on down the line. Um, and so when you look across that listing, um, at Summersworth Middle, Middle and High School, the ridership for the buses are shown as 26, 42, 22, 53, and 38. All buses have an 82 seat capacity. Okay, so uh, of course we don't want to have buses with 82 students on it because that can get a little hairy, but, uh, but it's, not, it's not close to the 82. Uh, when you look at uh, Tier 2, which is the Maplewood Elementary School, you'll see there's 44 on, S on bus S1, 36 on S2, 28 on S3, 35 on S4, and 40 students on S5. And for the Tier 3, which would be the Idlehurst Elementary School, you see numbers of 26, 30, 26, 35, and 38. I asked the bus company to let me know what's the longest time a student is on a bus. Um, and I'm hearing from them 45 minutes. Now, that was uh, what I was reported on today. Uh, and then when you look at the afternoon runs, you'll see Tier 1, Summersworth Middle School and Summersworth High School. Uh, again, the numbers are similar to the morning runs, 28, 53, 29, 53, 44. Maplewood Elementary School, 34, 35, 28, 28, 39. And Idlehurst, 21, 30, 25, 48, and 38. Um, and the feedback I was getting from the principals uh, on this is that typically every year, you know, some, some students get on the wrong bus. Uh, that may delay a run. I know the first day of school, uh, there, there was no students on, on this particular bus, but someone backed up into a school bus. Uh, there was a little fun, uh, fender bender. Uh, there was a bus that broke down. No students were on that bus, so they had to go out and get another bus to come on in, and so that caused some, some delaying uh, going on. Um, so right now, the way we're looking at this is that um, the bus company is going to review its scheduled routes as well as pick up and drop off times for buses, especially buses uh, S1 and S4. And I should receive that information tomorrow. Uh, that updated information will be shared with families after I receive it. Um, I also uh, want to say that the buses, based on the numbers that I'm getting, and I've had the principals verify for me, um, we're not seeing crowds over you know, over the highest number of, uh, I think it's 53. Uh, the good news is that the routes have, have better times than last week. It's getting better. I know I talked to Mr. McNelly today and he said it's getting better. I made some phone calls to different principals and they tell me it's getting better. Um, and so we're hoping that it will get better as, as the time goes on. I don't know if you have any questions. I can ask the principals to come up and speak um, and they can share their information that they have. That's Yeah, that and they were supposed to be getting dropped off at three fifty-five, and they got dropped off at four fifty-eight. Yeah, and part of that is related to the poor um, route scheduling, the times, because the expectation was that the students would be home sooner. Yeah. So there's a combination of things going on here. One is the scheduled route times, uh, and then the delays due to some things that happened during the first week of school, um, and so. We continue to monitor. If we need, you know, if we need an additional bus, I certainly can bring that forward. At this time, what the principals and other folks are telling me is we don't need that six bus. Mm -hmm. No, I just want to acknowledge yeah. that the 45 minutes. That's, that's ride time. Like yep. The, the kids getting the yep. bus on, they don't put them into it. Yep. If you're a first, second grader and you're in that bus line, for the 20 minutes to get on the bus and then 45 minutes on the bus and then you're running down the hill screaming yep. i'm gonna be my best you know yeah, and that's what it, i asked was ride unacceptable. time that's the ride time uh, okay. 
many, you know, I've seen kids on buses longer than an hour, yeah. and we don't want that. Uh, if they're waiting for the bus to come, that's an issue. Um, and that was an issue for the first couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I think it's just been a combination of things. I mean, I've been on some of the emails, um, and I certainly live in a district that was affected by the timing um, and didn't put my own kid on the bus based on what was happening. So just full disclosure about that. Yeah. Um, but I let the parents in the community figure it out. Um, and it sounds like it rose to the levels it needed to. Um, but certainly the numbers on here must be from yesterday or today because this the time frames were much different last week and that may be part of the reason what they may have adjusted the routes yeah uh, prior to you know me publishing them because yeah. i haven't got that full information from them. i just want to make sure we as yeah. a board are hearing what the community online in emails verbally were very clear about last week and not taking the the snapshot from today when it was much better because it was i'll admit my to you kid that was it was bad last week or sooner today i won't deny it wasn't bad last week yeah uh, i that's why we had the meeting yeah uh, i wanted something done about it uh, I absolutely really yeah. will Thank tell you, you that this was is an great issue. data uh, the first week was an issue the second week was an issue and that's what prompted me to have the meeting on friday to get everybody in the room and say what the heck's going on here yeah uh, let's do something about this um give us a little bit more time and and hopefully it'll be rectified and uh like I said, if there was evidence to me, if, if the team was coming to me saying we need that six bus, believe right. me, I would go with their recommendation. But that, in fact, I was leaning towards that direction. Mm -hmm. I was leaning towards that direction, and, and, and I took their feedback and reconsidered it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not, and I didn't hear much about overcrowding. Um, if they rework the routes, because what it seemed like is the younger kids were getting on the bus late because the m high school and middle school routes yep. were taking longer than had originally, and it's a hand-me-down, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's not that the school wasn't ready to put them on the bus and the kids weren't in line and right. the parents were driving the wrong direction to pick up kids and stuff. So I just want to, you know, acknowledge that it was a frustrating time. Yep. Um, and yeah, a new bus might not, another bus might not be the answer, but something we'll have to give yep. and something did today i did be curious to see like what was the big shift that a kid can get home 25 minutes sooner today yeah okay yeah board member clark oh yeah so i have two questions um one you may not be able to answer but um i just curious my own mind was thinking like how many seats because it says a2 capacity but how many um seats does that mean per bench do we have any idea what that would be? Is that three kids per bench? Three kids per bench. Is that three kids? Okay. No. I see no. Some depends on the size of the kid. Right. right? So, come on up if you have. I'm just thinking like um, high school kids that would be quite cramped in there for sure. If they're, you know, three kids per bench or. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure if you knew or anyone knew. If anyone and then um, um the after school bus i have heard some questions about i know we get rid of it and i feel really bad about that and we try to just keep that but the after school bus yep. oh fantastic yep. okay that is it thank you appreciate it uh board member marsh followed by wentworth and i have someone in and we don't typically like take questions but i'll be happy to hear you if you if you come up after them okay you got it. Yeah, after these board members speak, you can come up. Uh, we'll cop it. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to add to the conversation that um, I did um, appreciate the superintendents. Um, I do believe that he was on it. Uh, I, was at, I, was, I think it's okay for me to say that I was at a finance committee meeting, and um, yes, the superintendent was leaning towards a six bus if needed, and um, it, it, the subject, even though it was not on our agenda, did sort of dominate the, the pre-discussion, <laughs> uh, or I shouldn't say discussion, but uh, the uh, uh, s s sort of the one-sided conversation. <laughs> um, so I, I appreciate your actions. Also, I want to thank um, um, Carrie, uh, well, I'm sorry, Board Member Clark, um, 
for the question that was asked uh, because I was going to bring up the three to a seat. It was mentioned by a constituent of mine. I, I think that, um, you know, I will say that generally I am an advocate for seat belts on school buses, but if not, I am an advocate for at least the children being behind the, the, the high back cushion seat, um, which is uh, designed for compartmentalization, right? And based on um, the homework I've done, um, you know, yes, um, children, young children can fit um, a th th three to a seat, typically, um, safely, um, as was indicated. Um, larger children, um, older children um, may have difficulty, and if one child is halfway um, behind a seat, that is not safe. Um, but it sounds like, based on the capacity and numbers, that um, that uh, three to a seat, um, it sounds like it, we're operating a, a safe um, a safe number of children with a safe number of children under the high back seat. I just wanted to mention, you know, kids have friends, and there's 40 kids on the bus, right? Some kids might be sitting two to a seat, and someone jumps over and sits on a seat. I mean, that's the reality of being on the bus. I have to tell you that... Um, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Transportation for superintendents right now is the bane of their existence. We can't find drivers. You're lucky you have five drivers. I've talked to a superintendent in Maine uh, who I know quite well. They can't find drivers. And so parents are driving kids to school. This is not unique problem just to Summersworth. Uh, bus, bus rides are tending to be longer uh, because they've had to go towards um, – because they have to c combine buses because they don't have enough drivers. So this isn't like when I was in school and you were in school. We had lots of bus drivers willing to come in and work for X amount of money. Um, it's, a, it's a big challenge right now, and it's not just for summer's worth. It's across the board. Uh, I'm sure many superintendent ha superintendents are having this discussion. But when it comes to behavior on buses, kids like, you know, you, you'll hear all kinds of things on social media about kids sitting in the aisles. Kids are, you know, jumping up and down. Well, yeah, kids probably do jump up and down, and they probably do. You have one bus driver running the bus, and they have to pull over, and that delays a run. Um, so if that's happening, then, yeah, the bus driver is going to have to pull over and say, knock it off. Um, so you're not only dealing with, um, you know, time and road conditions and scheduling, you're also dealing with student behavior. Uh, and so you're going to have these types of situations that emerge uh, in the first, you know, month of school. Uh, it's it's just a fact, and um, you know I try to uh, do my best in terms of putting pressure on the bus company, uh, and and we we do give them feedback. I did have the administration meet with me, and they're giving me feedback, and so I'm hearing it from a lot of different people. So I felt the need to meet on Friday to really take care of it. I believe things are going to get better. Um, we'll certainly see what the next weeks uh, entail. So. Have we answered some of your questions already? Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. What, uh, is that yeah. that on? And there we what's go. your name? Oh, my name's Amanda. Um, I have a sophomore at the high school. Okay. Um, he's an absolute linebacker. He's 16 years old and he's six foot four. He takes the school buses, so he pretty much takes his own seats. Um, so this, this bus has been a big problem for me, but also just the communications. I don't know why I get none. I don't get letters in the mail. I don't get emails. I don't get texts. I don't get phone calls, nothing. I mean, if there was a school shooting, God forbid, I probably would only hear from it through friends. Um, so I've repeatedly requested you know, some sort of correction on that level. Um, through his guidance counselors, you know, school office administration and so forth. Um, the school bus has been a problem last year. Not one complaint. He took that school bus every morning, every afternoon. Um, he, there was that second bus that he could occasionally take, um, you know, and never a complaint. This year, I can't get him on that school bus in the morning or in the afternoon. He's 
begging for a ride every morning. My husband gets home at like two in the morning from work. I'm disabled. Sometimes I'm in so much pain, I can't get up to drive him. So his complaints, I mean, one of them was the overcrowding. You state that there is an overcrowding, but um, he says he can't find a seat. He's repeatedly had to like ask friends or parents for rides home um, because he there was no seat for him and kids were practically going to have to sit in the aisles. I know you say they're not sitting in the aisles, but and he's not the only one complaining that there's no seating. What so bus, what bus is he on? He takes the uh, I don't know what bus number, um, but it, it's. Uh, I mean, it leaves at 2.30. We, we live at Crystal Springs. Okay. So I think it's bus six or bus five. Oh, okay. I'm not really sure. We would have the numbers in front of us, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know which bus. I just know there used to be two afternoon buses, one in the morning. Again, either way, last year, not one complaint. Maybe he's just a teenager that doesn't want to sit with middle schoolers anymore. I don't know. I just... I didn't know who to contact, you know, regarding this particular concern of mine. So, saw the school board meeting on the, you know, SA fifty six website. So I thought I'd come and just ask some well, questions. Well, we're we're happy to hear you, but since it's like specific with your student, mm -hmm. um, our, our, you know, the building principal, the set of, does that make sense, superintendent? Super I was going to recommend uh, Principal Tebow is right behind you, and you can certainly get his number, uh, and he, he can he can actually get on the bus and see the bus your child's riding and get a head count and get back to me and let me know. Okay. And, and talk to your son about, you know, what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's not just him. Um, many of his, you know, friends or whatnot, I mean, yeah. other parents, um, I've been seeing messages on Summersworth Parents Connect on Facebook. Yeah. So, I mean, it is that one thing with the, at least the high school school bus has been a great concern for the afternoons. Okay. So, thank you for your time. All right, thank you. I, I just wanted to mention one thing. Uh, there were over 2,000 letters. We keep uh, track of the data that goes out. Um, and we find that some parents may not have updated their information in the um, school messenger service. We're only as good as the information we get from the parents. So one thing you might, I suggest you do is talk to Mr. Tebow to see to make sure that your information is updated. Because okay. I know for a fact that over 2,000 letters that I sent out went out. Yeah. So I, I got a screenshot of it from a friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I never received it. And okay. I, like I said, I don't usually get any updates yeah. whatsoever. Okay. So okay. it's a concern. Thank you. Other, yeah, board member Tierney. Yeah. Um, I thought, don't we have cameras on the buses? We have cameras on the buses. And, so, uh, I mean, it, that seems to me that would be a great way to check. Like, I, and I, I agree with you, Superintendent, yeah, yeah. that, you know, kids are going to move and they're going to be, you know, but I mean, in general, like, it seems like we should be able to see, like, clearly there are empty seats or wh whatever, yeah. you know, just as. Yeah. I saw a camera shot of about 20 kids on a bus and three little kids were sitting together and it looked like they were friends sitting together. It wasn't like they were forced to sit three across on the seat. I think they kind of wanted to sit together on the bus. Their friends coming together, they probably hadn't seen each other all, you know, all summer, and they're coming together. So that you get some of that kind of stuff going on on the buses. So, okay. um, but yeah, I, I encourage any member of the public to contact their school principal mm -hmm. to get that information. Um, please, please give us a call. Uh, we want to solve the problem. Uh, we really do. We don't you know, want to have kids being uncomfortable. And I asked the bus company to go back and look at their videotape because I said Manchester had a situation where they had someone sitting in the, in the, um, oh gosh, it's the aisles. And that's, you, that's illegal. You can't have that, right? And I'm not trying to throw Manchester on the bus, but I said, if I'm going to make a statement publicly that no kids are sitting in the aisles, then you need to back me and make sure that you're looking at the video uh, because invariably there'll be something posted on social media and it goes something like this. Hey, does anyone know that kids are sitting on the buses? It would be nice if those folks would pick up the phone and call the principal's office to verify that rather than post it on social media because then that takes a life of its own and then we're spending a disproportionate amount of time trying to answer those questions. And so that becomes a real challenge for administrators. Just to let you know that. Okay. Uh, board Member Demers. Microphone. Um, when the bus company is taking 
15 phone calls in an afternoon. Are you aware of that? Because I feel like it finally reached your desk because the parents jumped the bus company at the end of the week. They were just like done. I, I think I got three total emails on this. And, but one was I, forwarded me. For, I think one was forwarded to me by a board member. And I know your own personal situation. And as a mom, you have a right to say, hey. You know, yeah. I think it's no, no, no. I'm just saying that I'm yeah. worried that yeah. you got kind of caught off guard here a little bit at the end of the week because the bus company i i know just from my area are three bus stops in a row there were parents one would hang up the next one would call one would hang up the next one would call to the bus company right so i'm just encouraging the bus company to maybe be more transparent with the temperature of the parents calling them to sure. you i don't know when it reaches the threshold, but I, I don't know that you would have had that meeting if there wasn't a group of parents that sure. jumped to you because then you became aware and obviously you're right. going to take action. Right, yeah. And, and, um, and it's, it's an unfair setup for you. Uh, and, you know, if, this, if, the, if there's continued problems with transportation, I can certainly have their representatives come in and meet with this board. And we're paying them money as, for a service. And if there's continued issues, we can certainly have them come in and they can give us their perspective. I have no problem doing that whatsoever. So let's have another, uh, put this on the agenda for our next sure. meeting and get an update. Does that sound good? Any yep, other questions? All right. All right. We'll move along to um, our student school board representatives. They aren't here uh, this evening, but I believe the superintendent has an update. I do. I just have to find my paperwork here. Here we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I, I um, touched base with uh, Principal Tebow and uh, I said, can you give me some information on our student reps? And he said to me, uh, we're going to have four representatives this year. And so two are returning and two are going to be new and the older students, one older student's going to work with a younger student, so which is nice. Uh, and so we have four student representatives. One is Sophia Day, she's returning. You probably remember her from last year, right? And then we have uh, uh, Keisha Mawakari, and she's returning. And then we have Jack uh, Rossetier, who's new, and Chaplain, I think I pronounced this right, um, Kosul. Uh, I think I have that right. Um, and so those are the four students, Sophia, um, Keisha, and Jack, and Chaplain. Uh, Sophia and Keisha are going to be patching the, passing the torch over to Jack and Chaplain. And so Sophia and Chaplain are going to be here together in the Oct October 10th meeting, and they're going to rotate. So two will come, and the next two will come. And then in past years, um, according to Chris, and I take his word for it, our board has been very flexible with our students. Um, and depending on the time of the year, you know, if they're taking midterms, finals, and things like that, playing sports, uh, things come up, and uh, we always want to make sure the students are taking care of their academics first, and they're not stretched too thin, and hopefully, uh, those folks um, can leave right after they speak because, you know, they have busy lives too, just like you. But, you know, they're kids and they need to focus on school. Does that Great. make sense? Yes, of course. We okay. could e even, uh, you know, consider moving them up in the, uh, in the agenda. Mm -hmm. I think we've done that before. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Our city council update, Councillor Austin. Thank you, Madam Chair. City council met on Tuesday, September 5th. And the one thing I want to bring forward here this evening is uh, an invitation, if you will, uh, to the uh, open house at the fire department on September 27th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the fire station. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to come in for the first time and, you know, see the new station and, and have tours and, and see all the different facilities. And, and it's amazing how this building now will take care of our firefighters uh, in terms of their physical and mental health. And uh, it's it, a lot of work went into it, a lot of money went into it, but I think we have a state-of-the-art facility now that uh, the public should be proud of and we want the public to come in and see it. So September 27th, 4 to 6. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully there'll be some school trips to the new, I don't yeah, know. Should be. I don't know. There should be. <laughs> we could work that into the curriculum. Thank you, Counselor. All right, um, we'll see our student representatives in October. All right, committee reports, our standing committees. We'll start with um, budget and revenue. Board Member Marsh. I think, Madam Chair, just a point of clarification. Does the 
the business administrator have a report this evening? It's down under 7.1 is I'll be doing that report. It got moved down there. Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So um, the Budget and Finance Committee met on September 7th uh, to discuss the additional adequacy funds that we mentioned at the last meeting. Uh, you do have a memo in your packet. Um, we did have a great meeting. Uh, we discussed multiple options regarding the additional funds. Uh, we hit, there was a sensitivity uh, to maintaining the intent of what the fund sh would be used for and a sensitivity of the process, uh, including our good working relationships with the city council. Um, there was mindfulness to listen to our uh, building administrators uh, versus what us as board members might think they need. Um, and uh, so I think I, I pre with, we all appreciated that mindfulness there. Um, and let's see here. Um, and I, I think it's worth noting, and again, the business, business administrator will likely go into this in more detail, however, that the majority of the, of the additional funding uh, will be is proposed is really needed for to meet our legal obligations for special ed funding. Um, if you look at the chart and um, the funding proposed, um, and our w there was discussion of our district not having a contingency fund necessarily for special ed. Um, we discussed how that would be a wise thing to do. However, it's a difficult thing to do when our budgets are so tight. It's difficult to potentially make cuts when we have a contingency of what may be. Um, so that's a discussion we will have uh, in the future. Um, and also we discuss regarding special ed that when, when budgeted, um, it's based on trending amounts, but there is also unknowns, including this year. Um, it is under uh, the, the proposal for uh, the additional adequacy funds is on our agenda tonight under 7.1 approval of request for supplemental appropriation to adequacy funds. Uh, we, we, will, we do have an additional meeting. Our next meeting is, is, is September 19th at 5.30. And again, the business administrator will be going over um, this in more detail. Thank you. And that'll be an edit to our to our posted meeting on September 19th. It's actually um, the budget revenue at the SAU at 5.30 instead of 5. Yep. Is it the 18th? Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Let's move move on to uh, building grounds and transportation. Board Member Hackworth. We've had no meeting since our last one. I'm looking for scheduling next week. Okay. Wonderful. Um, educational programs and community outreach. Board yes. Member Wentworth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we were just discussing that we're actually meeting September 18th. Okay. So it will be a very busy week. Um, so we'll meet at the SAU at 5:15 on the 18th. Um, the following meetings, which will be in here, are um, World Meet Monthly, October 10th, um, November 14th, and December 12th. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. And Policy Committee, um, Board Member Tierney. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Policy Committee uh, just met uh, prior to this meeting tonight at 545, so I haven't really digested everything that we talked about, um, so I'll we'll sort of just give a very general high, uh, overview. Um, I will say, first of all, you're all aware that we will be looking for first reading at policy EFAA. Policy committee has not reviewed that. Um, I so just you know, so you're aware of that, right? But that's that's fine. We'll discuss that. I think it's a pretty straightforward policy. Um, we so we spent the the committee the meeting prior to this school board meeting. Um, we discussed the policy JRA student records and access uh, FERPA. We essentially compared the sample policy from NHSBA with our current policy um, and looked at where there was variation and um, had a great discussion about um, imp improving and clarifying the, the policy that we do have for this. I will say the, the bulk of it really is dealing with um, a procedure for what to do if a family or a student wants to uh, make changes or corrections and so we kind of had a discussion about well how, how would this look and what would qualify as uh, you know a correction or an amendment um, 
and I let me see if there's, there's anything else. Um, we talked about, um, I, I had brought up the idea of uh, mental health. Do we need to be really specific about that? And um, th the thing that's important to recognize is that, um, and I, I hope I don't screw this up or say this incorrectly, um, basically the health, see I have so many papers in front of me, um, this, any of the health records really are going to fall under the, be under the purview of the nurses. You, you, um, so there's not just this student's medical data just sort of floating around where people can get it, third parties or whatever. So it really still falls, um, on, it's, it's still protected information. Um, so I think that's just important to know. But that's, I just kind of want to leave it at that. We'll be just, you know, next week, or the next policy committee uh, is on the 26th at 545 in the SEU office, and we will be looking at um, a, a, you know, policy that includes all of these changes that we discussed. And at that time, I can probably have a more coherent um, discussion about what we actually <laughs> discussed. So no, thank so. you. And, and thank you to the, administ the administ administration um, administrators that came it was really a great meeting to have their input we got through the entire policy which was hefty um, because answers were given in real time yeah board member Clark did you oh I just want to say this really quick that um, the health information for our students is covered under HIPAA so we wouldn't be yeah it's a separate and yep yeah, it's always protected or should be protected so. great all right, thank you. There's no presentation this evening, so we'll we'll go into agenda item number six, our policy adoption. Um, the policy for first reading uh, this evening is policy EFAA, student food service meal payment charging and meal account management, a very straightforward and needed um, policy to be adopted. So, we, yep, board member Wentworth. I make a motion to read the policy. EFAA student food services meal payment charging in meal account management by title only. I second that. Okay. All right, board member Terry. Okay. Policy EFAA student food service meal payment charging and meal account management. All right. Any, so I need a, a motion to, you know, either, you know, move this to second reading. Yep. And, and we'll just we'll just have it as our first reading. Uh, I'll defer to Katie. Is there a time is sensitivity on this to adopt sooner than later? I mean, yes and no. I mean, we do want to get it done so we can get the information out to families that the policy has changed. Um, it's up to you if you want to do it tonight or you can wait till the next meeting. There's no immediate rush. Okay. I, I think you can wait. Yeah, I think you can wait till the next meeting. Okay. And, and Madam Chair, just point of clarification, discussion would happen at the next meeting. Discussion Correct. would happen in the next yep. meeting. Any clarification right now? We've had it all in our packets to read over, so it's really just the first reading. And... Um, any concerns or anything we can let uh, board member Tierney know. Okay, all right. All right, moving on to new business. Agenda item number seven, uh, point one, approval of request for supplemental appropriation adequacy. All set. Okay, some of this is gonna be repetitive because I've said it, I think, a couple of times already, but I'll go through it again. So as you all know, in November of each year, we get an estimate from the state of what we're gonna budget for our adequacy. Um, and then in September of each year, they give us the revised after all of our end of year data is recorded and everything. Some years, there's legislative changes that cause a change in the amount we're gonna get, and that's what happened um, this year. So um, I've put in the memo some of the changes. So they've increased the base rates for base aid, special ed aid, and free and reduced lunch, as well as our ELL um, information that we get. They did eliminate the third grade reading. Um, and then they also increased our extraordinary needs grant. If you remember the current year or last year, we got 262,000. They've increased that statewide. And they also reduced the stabilization, stabilization grade and relief aid grants. However, they added a home, hold harmless part of the grant. So if you lost that money, they have a hold harmless amount, so you're not losing any funding. But that will phase out over the next 10 years. So what that means for us is uh, in November, when we created the budget, um, we they estimated about $7.2 million that we would receive. Um, based on these changes, um, we are actually going to receive just over $9.1 million. So there's additional revenue of $1.9 million. Now there's been some confusion because they've been, um, the information that they released 
originally said due to RSA we were only going to be able to receive the amount that was due to the legislative changes and not anything that had to do with our ADM. I did contact the state, but we do benefit being a city instead of a town form of government. So the RSA doesn't apply to us as a city. So we are able to request the full $1.9 million. We do not have to follow the RSA because we're not a town that has to call a special meeting for voters. We have a city council form of government. So we do benefit from that because we can now have the full $1.9 million. So I had said last time it was $1.6, <laughs> but we can, in fact, ask for the full $1.9. So I just wanted to make that clarification for everybody. Um, so, to utilize these funds, we do have to go forward to the City Council for a request for a supplemental appropriation. So what will happen is our revenue will be increased and then we will add appropriations um, on the expense side to cover the $1.9 million. So tonight, the board is going to look at um, some expenditures that we've come up with um, to recommend that we go forward with requesting the supplemental appropriation. So as, as Todd mentioned, um, since we created the budget um, and have new administration in our special ed office, they've taken a look at the current special ed budget and the out of district placements and everything that we have. And um, we've had some significant increases in regards to special ed. So it's a combination of stu students that have moved into the district. We had six new students move in as well as some changes in placements for students that we already had. So it's causing an increase to our budget of just under $1.3 million. So for out-of-district placements, we have 26 students that are placed out-of-district. The original budget was um, $1.6 million, and the actual that's coming in is uh, just over $2.6 million. So we have an increase there of over a million dollars. Uh, of that $1 million, 728000 is due to those six students that moved into the district, which we have no control over when we, and we didn't know it at the budget time. And then there's contracted services, um, which includes speech, OT, PT, things like that. So the budget was 879000 and it's coming over, uh, in at $1.1 million. So there's an increase of $269,000. And of that increase, 82,000 is due to a student that's moving into the district. It's not an out-of-district placement, but it's some services that an in-district student needs. And I can't go into much more detail than that just because of the special ed nature and it needs to be confidential and not identify students. So originally when we had um, looked at this 1.9 million in adequacy, we were going to fund the roof project. There were some additional modifications that needed to be done. Unfortunately, with the special ed, we have to cover the special ed. We're legally obligated. So it's kind of changed our course of what we want to um, do for these adequacy funds. So we're going to need to use that one point, almost 1.3 for special ed. Um, we did earmark um, 100000 for the school-based health clinic. Originally, we are going to go forward with that because that's already started and we've committed to that. So the additional funding, as I said, is $1.9 million. The additional SPED is uh, $1.3, and then the health clinic of $100,000. So that left um, $556,451 that we could use for other things. So you'll see in the packet that there's a list of expenditures that we are requesting. Um, we did meet with all administration to get their input on what they would like to see put in. Um, and we met with the budget committee who also added a few items of their own into the list. So I'm just going to run through the list. Um, so at the high school, there's um, a request for a marquee sign for the front of the building, uh, marching band uniforms, a culinary oven for the CTC, some athletic uniforms for the middle and high school. It's $1,000 for each sport. Um, and then 300 for golf because they don't cost as much. And then we're going to build into our budget a rotating cycle for these uniforms so that we can replace them on an ongoing basis. Um, some whiteboards at the middle school. We did add back in the late bus um, for the after school, um, as Carrie mentioned. Uh, an entry level weight room for the middle school. Um, main hallway tile replacement at the middle school. Projector bulbs at Idlehurst. Um, supplies and print media for Maplewood. Um, these were things that were requested during budget time that we couldn't fit in that got removed, so we're adding them back in. Um, the security doors at the health clinic, if you remember when we discussed the health clinic, we had to pare back the, the project a little bit, and these are the security doors that are going to be in between, so we felt for security purposes we wanted to add those back in. Uh, snow blowers uh, for district wide. Um, and then um, I'm going to skip the next two just for a minute. Um, and we added additional radios district-wide. There's a need for that. And then um, 
when I spoke to EEI, who's the company who's doing the roof, there was a $250,000 differential between what we needed, so we added that back in. So the two items, um, the high school secretary and the groundskeeper, those, um, those were added by the budget committee. So if you remember correctly, we reduced the um, position at the high school for the secretary, um, and we've come to find out that there is a need for that, and um, so we've added that back in. Katie, if I can just... Um clarify it, it wasn't quite the groundskeeper it was ground right it was ground not maintenance a, not exactly a position. yep not a position to clarify for outside. yep yeah correct so all of those total the five hundred and fifty six thousand dollars of the remaining funds I mean we have had some feedback since um, with the grounds maintenance side um, looking at possibly doing a tractor instead of that but it would be, still be for for maintenance and grounds so no, I don't. Okay. I, yeah. Oh, yeah, Board Member Wetner. Thank you, Katie. Um, it was lovely hearing it for the third time. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think one of the things that I want to be really clear about with the budget process to everyone is that every single admin has been a part of this the superintendent, like every single level. And so one of the things is, is that there were some of these things that had to be cut or, or that we chose to cut before um, because, you know, to, uh, for f some more forward facing positions with students, this is a different, we have a different uh, amount in front of us. Therefore, um, some of these positions are, um, are, are, are funding is being asked to happen again, like the, like the bus and the um, grounds maintenance. keeping, maintenance, keeping. Yeah, <laughs> the keeping of the grounds. Um, and then also, you know, I think it really says a whole lot um, that we're actually getting some feedback from the administrators and from the schools and from the community all about different things that need to happen going forward. Um, so I just really want to throw out there that uh, a lot of thought and work has been uh, put into this list that you see in front of you. Um, and part of it is for unforeseen things that we we are going with what we have. So um I'm uh, grateful that to especially to Katie um, uh, and Lou and then all of our admin team for being a part of uh, all of this. So thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I have four questions. So um, am I so to am I to understand correctly that the um, Going back up to the first part here with the so these out of district placements, uh, these students moving into the district. So this increase, this sort of notable increase, is predominantly done or pr predominantly a result of the fact that these are students coming in that need require special educa special education services. So or came with us with a current out of district placement. Okay, so if it was. The same number of students coming, 26 students coming in that didn't require special services, this would be sort of a negligible, like not necessarily as much of an impact financially. Uh, just assume. I, I guess. It, well, I mean, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just curious. So, it's, yeah. so, it's, so what do we do? So, and, and if I'm understanding this all correctly, and I'm not a numbers person, so don't ever hesitate to correct me if my understanding is screwy. Um, it, it sounds like, so we have this extra money because of the adequacy. So, hey, yay, we can sort of afford this in a sense this year. Yeah, so if so, I guess I'm just You're assuming what your question yes. is. Yes. If we didn't have this additional yes. adequacy Thank coming you. in, yes. the process, we would still need to cover this 1.3. Right. However, we the have process to. would yes. be, I would still be going to the city council asking for a supplemental. For more, I just okay. would not have the revenue to cover it. So they would have to pull it from fund balance or do okay. something, or we would have to do something else. Okay. We just wouldn't have the revenue to cover it. Okay. All this right. way, we have it to cover. So there's no tax impact. There's no asking for additional funds from the fund balance. We're okay. asking to use the revenue that's coming in. Okay. And so the other thing was that basically every year this is a possibility. 
Yes, it is. Okay. And it's always after the school year start. We never know this, like, when we... Okay. Not unless they they move in as we're creating the budget, budget. and we would know, okay. yes. Okay. Is yeah. this a typical number of... Uh, I think six is kind of high, actually, I would say. Yeah. I, okay. I, I'm not, I couldn't be for sure. You'd yeah, have yeah. to ask the special yeah. ed department, I'm, but I'm just curious. it seems yeah. pretty high. Okay. Um, all right. And so now these ex expenditure requests, this list of expenditure requests... This is what we're asking for still in, in, inclusive. So um, we're asking for all of these, and this still recognizes the fact that we have this extra money that we need to pay for these students who yeah, came Yeah, so in. this all totals the 1.9. We're not asking okay. for anything additional over what the revenue Got increases. It. Okay, all right. So then my last question is, in regards to the positions, the secretary, the grounds maintenance positions. I thought that all along we were we were saying we didn't want to use sort of this extra money for positions because we don't know what's going to happen next year. Yep, I'm, I'm going to clarify. There's no, there's the only the only position is um, the secretary, the secretary, not the grounds. It's not a position. It's it just groundskeeper money. It's like for groundskeeping. Oh, okay, well, all right. So but fine. So the secretary then. Yep. Okay. So we're yep. saying great, we can pay for you this year. And that's all we can. I think we're going to have to budget for it next year. It's a needed position. Okay. All right. Well, then that's I okay. Mean, that, that, I mean, logically, that's what we would do. And I will say, with the guidance that I've received from the state, a lot of these increases are going to be going forward. So a lot of times we typically say we only want to do one-time purchases because we don't know. But because they've raised the base amounts and everything, they're saying it's more stable than in the past. And I can only go by what? I'm being told it's and I don't think we're alone in, in um, using some of the money for personnel it, other districts have done it um, so uh, board member Clark yeah so I can um, see the current uh, high school secretary is probably very excited to be getting hopefully some help I know she's quite busy um, I want to say thank you for you guys for putting all this hard work in. Katie, thank you for all this. I do have some quick questions. Um, I am all for weight room and exercise, but what's the entry level middle school weight room? I don't want, I don't want, I just want some a little bit more clarity because um, currently the weight room at the high school is monitored by the coaches. I know that they're pretty thin. Are they going to be expected to monitor the weight room of another facility and they can't be in two places at once so my thought would be if we did do the weight room um i don't steve's not here so he can't speak to why i think can i, I don't ask know you, if can jim, jim can come answer up or james come up yeah please yeah. yes yeah and then i have more questions so just so we know Am I on? Okay. The vision, if you can visualize the middle school gym where our current uh, PE teacher's office is, it serves as the office and um, athletic storage. So that would be repurposed to be a weight room. Entry level weight room, I'm going to really lean on uh, Sarah and Dustin, they're our PE teachers. So this would be uh, incorporates like some weightlifting programming into our health and wellness classes. Um, but for our middle school teams, it's an opportunity to access the weights as well without needing to go and impede into the high school programs. Um, like I said, I'm going to lean on them, but I don't see like, you know, Olympic weights with a squat rack in there, but something more uh, aligned to be meaningful and uh, helpful for middle school students. So then, so they're on board. So to keep going down further, so we're taking their office. Where are they going to go? We have a small room we call the Kid Cave across the hall. Their offices would be repurposed there. And then the athletic storage we have uh, behind the stage, we have a, a closet. We call it the Chamber of Secrets because it's the collector of, of all things that we don't need anymore, but we just haven't gotten rid of and purged. Um, so athletic storage will go up behind the stage. So we're still checking the boxes to, to cover everything we need and support people we need to cover and just creating an opportunity for exposure to, to weights at the middle school level. Okay, great. So it's going to be more like for teaching opportunity and then for potentially coaches to potentially use right yeah. okay okay awesome and then i had um a question 
Let's see. Athletic, well, I'm super excited about athletic uniforms because my daughter right now is um, soccer. She's a soccer uniform and she's a volleyball player. So I'm super excited about that. And she will be as well. Uh, maybe that's my only question would be um, the entry well. Yep, yeah, entry level. Waiting. Okay, that's it. Thanks, guys. All right, board member Marsh. Yeah. All right. Well, as chair of, of the budget and revenue, uh, I don't have any questions. I can answer some perhaps, but I don't have any questions. I will say that, um, and those were all really great questions, and I'll say that um, uh, normally um, you know, I, I do have a history of being cautious with spending this type of funding for, um, for positions. Um, and I've voiced caution in various you know, committee meetings and, and school board meetings. Um, I think this particular position just made sense. I think to the commit to the administrators, to the superintendent, to the committee. Um, and I think this type of funding gives us, and I, we're not too far removed from this recent budget, right? Um, but this type of funding, and, and the decisions that we made, the tough decisions that we made, mm -hmm. this, this funding gives us an opportunity to reset. This, I think this funding gives us an opportunity to fund some of those positions that many of us had questions on, that, that many of us um, were hesitant to cut in the last budget. Um, and not limited to, but including uh, the late bus, all right? Um, I know that uh, in the last budget season there was discussion of, well, it's, it's, there aren't too many students that take the bus. It's in, in the, when we're making choices and we're setting priorities, this has to go. Um, on the other hand, um, if we have programs and we have opportunities for students to be able to get additional help after school, but we don't provide the transportation for them to get home, <laughs> right? Whether they take it or not, I think it's important to offer that op that option. Um, so we can we have the opportunity to reset without costing the taxpayer additional money. Without costing the taxpayer additional money. Um, so uh, and we were sensitive to again the process, including uh, uh, how we navigate this with the city council. Um, we asked the question to Katie I, m multiple times in different ways because it's how I do things. <laughs> I've answered it multiple times, Todd, right? Um, of what's the intent of this money? What's, what's the RSA, right? Is it for tax reduction? Is, is it for this? We wanted to make sure, again, in order to be sensitive to the, to the city council and the, and the people of Summersworth. Um, so I fully support uh, these changes. Thank you. Is weight class going to be an after school program? I'll ask that later. Yes, board member Dimmers. I just want to point out that I'm actually surprised that there's even a question of if it's too much for one person in that main office, especially since we just paid for this amazing upgrade that now requires a little bit more effort to let people in. And this is the building that has literally, I'm looking at the enrollment data, thank you. Uh, almost 100 kids more in the building. That's 100 more parents who are calling when the bus is late, not for high schoolers, hopefully. They're probably grateful that I am. Um, <laughs> but like, this is the building that needs the more support. So I just wanted to point out there's 100 kids more in this building than in buildings that have more than one admin. And we just put a new duty of letting people in this new door. And of course, it's gonna burn out the lovely staff we already have if we don't give them the support they need. Um, so I think that it, it, I just wanna point out those other two reasons why it all makes sense to me. May I say something? I wanted to just say, you know, there's more to it than just the secretarial duties. Um, we have to be mindful of school safety and the more eyes that you have on the doors, uh, that's helpful, particularly if you have more people. There's a lot of activity in that building, and many, all the high schools actually I've worked in have always had two. 
Um, and because if somebody's, if that one person's out, it, it really gets difficult. So I saw that Chris sat down with me and, and, j and justified the need. I asked him some tough questions. He answered those questions, and I felt comfortable bringing that forward. So I appreciate, uh, Chris, you, you doing that. And um, I, th I think it's, you know, for safety reasons as well, it's an important move. So. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to clarify what, what we did in budget. We did have a motion to approve the full amount that we were receiving, um, the one one point nine. Again, um, we this is uh, we, the suggested motion is um, to approve it as it is to move to city council. I'll give you the the exact wording is in our packet. Are there any other questions at this moment? I think we're moving on. So the suggested uh, motion is I move to approve the request for supplemental appropriation adequacy funds as recommended by the budget and revenue committee and authorize the superintendent to provide the request to the finance committee of the Summersworth City Council. Um, yes, board member. Point of clarification, do we need a motion to waive board rules? Is it seeing this is the first? It's a tough one because there's a time, there's a time. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, there's a, there's a time sensitivity um, to And it. I did report it at the last two meetings, so. I just want to make. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I would be we, okay the, with that's that. That can't hurt either we way. Can cover it. Yep. <laughs> I recommend that yep, you do what do you just Thank suggested you. first, and then vote on the motion. Yeah, if you don't if mind. That makes sense. Are you gonna? Okay. We do like to. <laughs> All right. I, I make a motion to waive uh, board rules to approve um, the request for supplemental appropriation okay. adequacy funds. Second. Okay. 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 Any discussion about this request? All right, all in favor say aye. aye. All aye. opposed? Okay, we have board rules to be able to um, make the motion. If you, anyone has it in front of them, the suggested motion, it's a it's a lengthy one, but it's for the full amount. It's under um, new business in our packet. I okay. move to approve the request of supplemental appropriation adequacy funds as recommended. as recommended by budget and revenue committee and authorized the superintendent to provide the request to the finance committee of the summer's worth city council second okay any discussion thank you it's great oh yep board oh, member marsh yes. and i do support this i just want to indicate that i did ask to waive board rules because typically we have two readings in order to give uh the people of some of the chance to weigh in however i recognize the time the timeliness i think we all do um, of making this decision, uh, which is why we had, uh, we waived board rules and made the decision tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? All right. The motion is accepted. Um, all right, so let's see here. I think that, I think we needed uh, any, I'm not, I don't have the, I have all the budget stuff in front of me. One second. Wait, wait. Okay, future meeting dates. Yep, September 18th at 5:15 is our uh, education programs um, here at City. No, it's at SAU at the SAU. Okay. Um, the next board uh, September 19th budget and revenue um, 5:30 at the SAU, and our next board me meeting is September 26th. Uh, agenda item number 10. Any comments by visitors? Okay, seeing none. Uh, comments by board members just raise your hand and I'll call on you yes board member Wentworth I would be remiss in not wishing my daughter a happy 13th birthday today I just want to take a minute and say that we had our first um, committee meeting with the admin team um, I think it was so great and so refreshing um, there was such a great co collaboration of um, ideas and I'm looking forward to doing more of those so I just want the community to know that it's going it's going well for the first one and I think of good things to come that's all I wanted to um, just encourage so I do look at the Facebook Summersworth Parents Connect. I follow that, um, and so sometimes I see things that I think are of note. note, of note. Um, but I just want to encourage the community, do please reach out to, I don't know where I'm looking. Look, where's the camera? Um, yeah, everywhere. Um, I just want to encourage community members to not forget that you do have individual board members that you can contact if you have concerns about things. Um, you know, you we have one for each ward, and then, of course, all the at-large members. Um, nothing wrong with 
you know, obviously sharing things that, you know, when you're connected with people on social media, but, um, I just, I just encourage you to, to not forget that we, um, it is our job to work for you, to help you, you know, so don't be afraid to reach out to us and say, Hey, here, you know, there's this thing going on. I'm not sure what, you know, and then we can either answer it or we can pass it up the chain and get help, you know, help for you. Um, so just, and, and I say that just because it is easy on social media. Um, and I don't want to disparage anybody who's shared things on social media, but I just, it, it is easy to sort of almost sound alarmist, like, oh my gosh, you know, the sky is falling down. And, and when it, it, you know, if you just kind of talk to us, then, you know, we may be able to assuage your fears. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And I thank you for um, the budget committee. I think you did a great job um, with, you know, figuring out a responsible way to spend that money. Um, I, I really like that. And yes, I second, um, it was wonderful to have the administrators there at the meetings. And I appreciate your input. We have a smart, strong group of people, you know, leading, leading our schools. So it's good. Board Member Marsh, yep. Yeah. I just want to second Board Member Tierney's uh, comments regarding the importance of input from residents. Uh, I've seen time and time again uh, how, how decisions, how meetings have been uh, swayed by uh, the input of residents, uh, rather than via email, phone, texting, in person, um, that your thoughts and opinions, concerns do matter. It may not seem it sometimes. Uh, the, the wheels of government can to turn slowly at times, um, but they do matter. So thank you, and also, yeah, happy birthday to uh, board member Wentworth's daughter. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? All right, all right. Being 831, I'm looking for a uh, motion to go into non-public per um, 91A3. Uh, it's A and E. So a motion to go into non-public. Motion to go into non-public, A and E. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in f uh, roll call, please. Maggie Thank Larson. You. Yes. Todd Marsh. Yeah. Carrie Clark. Here. Paul Hackworth. Yeah. Tom McCallion. Yeah. Barbara Wentworth. Yeah. Susan Tierney. Mandy Demers. Yep. 